What's up? And welcome back to Opposites Track Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, your girl, and I'm sitting next to... Miguel Ramirez. What's up, everybody? How was your day? How was your week? How is your life? Going. And today, this podcast is brought to you by you guys and us again. Make sure you guys go to OppositesAttractPodcast.com. Share it with the people that you know. That's how you guys can uh, support the show. You guys can follow us there, follow our social media. You guys can watch the podcast there. You can listen to it there. And uh, you'll see a tab that says support the show. And when you click on that, you'll see how you can support us on Amazon. When you click through that link and buy anything on Amazon, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps us out. And you'll also see a link to Trust Inc., which is our notary company, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. And uh, you can support us on buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod, uh, like Superstition Spices did. We'll tell you about that later. Uh, and uh, we're also affiliates with Pinwheel, uh, promo code O-A-P-T-E-N, all together, all in caps. And if you guys want to go and check that out now, you guys can do that. Uh, but we'll tell you more about that later on in the show. So what's up, babe? What's up, yo? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Dude, I see your your hair is going to the side, huh? Yeah, it's are, getting are long. Gonna- <laughs> it's getting long. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we uh, we're back after another week last week. Uh, so last week we recorded a little bit early mm-hmm. because we were going away on a camping trip. Yes. And man, that was such a fun trip. We ended up going camping with uh, Joey's best friend who we talk about all the time on mm-hmm. the podcast and his parents. Yes. And uh, it's funny because we, we've talked about like the two little boys like they're they're like little brothers almost and they run back and forth through the neighborhood to his house and back to our house and they'll sleep over there they'll sleep over here yes and they're just butt buddies i love (laughs) (laughs) right remember what we talked about that's what they would be called if it was like the 90s right i love their relationship (laughs) i really do i love seeing them just grow together right right? and the difference in their personality and how they just it's seriously it's just opposites attract Right, because they too? are, yeah, they are opposite. You think so? In their personality, Evan is very mellow, very calm. You know, he is kind of, he's very. I see him and his personality is a lot like me, and Joey's like you. You think so? I yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, you know, That's he's funny. very serene, just like chill. Yeah. Not very temperamental. No, he's very not. calm. He's very chill. Easygoing kind of dude. Very, you know, that's what I mean. And yeah. Joey's like, what? We lost the game. Roar. Really? <laughs> nice. Thanks a lot, babe. <laughs> but yeah, they But that's I guess what they I do. mean. They but do that's have what their... I mean. But that's how it they just work together. Yeah. But everywhere you go, they're I mean, if they're not together, they're talking about getting together right you know they know what's going like oh he's not here because he's doing this and then when he gets back we'll be back together again yeah and what's cool is that we are also friends with With his his family yeah Yeah. so we went on a camping trip with them and it was our first time really spending that much time with them because normally we'll have like a barbecue and stuff but there's other people around and the conversations you know this time around it's like i had personal um time with you know, the yeah, mom with the parents and, and yeah. And it was fun. Just fishing and some other friends too. Yeah. It yes. was cool. Um, and my favorite part of the entire trip was just being together, the family, but it was disconnecting. It was letting go, right? Social media. We had no access so to we, social media at all. Yeah, like so zero out here in Arizona. We went to Bartlett Lake. Yes. Bartlett Bartlett Lake Flats is the place where we went camping. Mm-hmm. And they they know. They know what's up. Like, they know how to go camping. Right. They had... Uh, they, We're uh, newbies. Our, our uh, Joey's friend's parents and their friends, they had two trailers. We had tents. and uh, But even still, right now in Arizona, it's still pretty awesome, even if you yes. go camping in a tent. Here soon, not so much. But, right. Um, but Bartlett Lake Flats, and yes. they knew, like, you got to get there early because right. it was you getting You just, busy. like, cut me off and sorry, shit. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. But I was just kind of saying like where we were at. <laughs> yeah, I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> but I love you. I appreciate you. Now Whatever. shut don't up. Be, no. be... <laughs> we, we just got done listening to, we're not done, but we started listening to the five little languages. We can get in that a little bit. So after you kind of give them an uppercut, you got to kind of smooth that out with, I love you, yeah. baby. I appreciate you. That's I'll give you your time in, in a little book. bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so go ahead. Back to the So just being able to disconnect, I think it is so important for everyone right. to be able to do that. 
And you don't have to go to a lake to do that. But I was feeling. But it helps. It, it does help. It, yes, it does. But I was just feeling, you know, like my my body, like achy. I got all kinds of blood work tests. I'm like, what's going on? But I was going through a lot of mental stress, right? Yeah. Right and before, right before right the camping before, trip. Yeah. And then, you know, even kickboxing, I was still going to work out, but I didn't feel strong. Like I didn't, you know, to feel grounded. Yeah. And I noticed that after the camping trip and just letting go and being one with nature <laughs> yeah, and with you all and just enjoying just every part of it, like being present and leaving everything behind and playing, right? Like getting back to that childlike within. Yeah. We played frisbee and football and we went kayaking and there was a point when I was there where I took off in the kayak. You were out yeah. there on yeah, the we platoon both boat. The pontoon. Yeah. The pontoon boat. And um I just took off and of course I get into my you know, get into prayer and gratitude and just listening to the sounds of nature and being one. And I, it didn't seem like I was gone for an hour, but Amanda start started to get oh, worried. You were right? gone for a while, yeah. And she had you, you go and look for me to make sure that I didn't get lost. We were joking that we weren't gonna, you weren't gonna have. Oh, because uh, the kayak that you were on, uh -huh. there was a piece in the middle that had been broken off or it was missing. So it, the um, Joey's friend's dad was telling us like, if it breaks off. Or if it flips over, it's going to fill up with water. So we were saying, like, we're going to, like, see, like, off in the distance, just, like, Sonia swimming back from, like, way out there because the <laughs> fucking thing flipped over. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, from, you know, just getting back from the trip, like, I went to, you know, the gym and I felt so much better. Like, I felt stronger. I was an achy. That's you know, good. I'm like, maybe that's just what we got to do is just be able to, like, disconnect. Every once in a while. You know, yes. Yes. Yeah. But That's cool. we had a great time. You and I had a blast. We did. We saw some stars, lots of stars, and we made our own stars yeah. every night. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. No, it was nice. And then, like, as soon as you get into service range, like, your phone just freaking uh, blows up, and it's like ding, back, ding, back to reality. Ding, ding, but ding, ding. but uh, no, it was nice. It was really nice to get away, go away kayaking, and just kind of float around on the the rafting mm -hmm. that they had this big old rafting that you could just kind of chill but it was a it was a great time and then so sonia and i i don't know i don't know if this is something that we've developed over the years or but just kind of the way we see things now because we went on this camping trip right and we and we're seeing people like they have a better setup like they got the camp the campers and the the trailers and all that stuff and we're looking at it and we're like, dude, like this is this is pretty cool. Like to be able to kind of do this every once in a while and go out camping. But it's not just like, hey, let's go buy a thirty thousand dollar trailer. Right. The first I, I don't know if it was that way for you, but this it, was my, our the, conversation that we had when we were looking up at the stars, talking about how amazing this is and yeah. building memories with the kids. And Miguel tells me, you know, we can live this life and have other people pay for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much my thought. You know, but I, I mean, is that is that the way you think of things? Is that the way you like? Because my thought, like, just saying, for the, I think for most people, they'll go out camping, they have an awesome time, mm -hmm. and their thought is, I want to go buy a camper, right? And that's a thirty dollars, thirty thousand right. dollar camper or whatever. That's not even my like. My thought is, how can I get that and have somebody else pay for it? Exactly. Yeah. How can I get that same camper and rent it out and then we can use it? What's so beautiful about all of that is that we have learned to think that way. Like, I mean, I always knew that I wanted success, you know, like even right before you. But that wasn't, yeah. to me, success wasn't having time freedom. Now it's like, how can I have that and still have time? to do the thing that I want to do. Yeah. You know, we have put time into growing, into learning, reading, audio, just always looking at becoming better. Yeah. And together we have grown. 
right? Like it's not I'm going this way and you're going that way. Yeah. We have grown together. And the way I can't remember who I heard this from or what book or what podcast I heard this from, but he said as a married couple or as a couple, think about your conversations and how much time you spend on finances, like talking about money, not in a negative way, but in a positive way. You understand? Yeah. Like looking at your um, net worth, right? Like Or look, your account balance. I mean, just all of it. Yeah. All of it. Because back in the day, talking about money was a bad thing. Like people, you don't do that. Like not our, for us, though. our parents didn't talk to us about money. Not really. Right? No. I mean, think about just... Uh, you know, I mean, I think my grandmother, all she said was like, save, right, save money. Right. Yes. And she was really, I mean, that was, yeah, I think that was kind of it. That was one of the only people that really was like, save money. Right. And with us, I mean, I think it's on that a daily where we are talking about how to grow, right? Like how to grow, how, how are we going to learn this game of life because and that's how I'm starting to see it is I'm like listen there's people out there that have figured this out like they know what to do they've done it there is a way and it's like in order to find that out you have to put yourself in that environment and that's what I've been on lately like it's in my gut and I'm searching and I'm searching and I'm looking up conferences, podcasting conferences, entrepreneur, like just different conferences so that we can get around those people. Right. Because that's how we've always learned. But yeah. we've always learned a big part of it was learning from our legal shield family. Yeah. You know, and then we started going outside of that and learning. Yeah. Yeah. But for us, I feel that we have learned, we've grown together, and that is something that's just on top of mind because we want to get out of this rat race. Like we want to leave our children with a legacy. And it doesn't have to be like, I mean, I don't know, maybe generational, Yeah, you know? Like it well, can be generational, it, it's, but it's weird. if we teach them, if we teach them, it, if we teach our kids what we know. And that's, and that's what I was going to say. Yes. It's like, you don't have to leave them anything behind if they have it in here. Exactly. But we are leaving something. You behind. know what? I, yeah. yeah. They think different. Their mindset, the yeah. way they look at things is different. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like um, what we were listening to this morning, you know, about how you think about money. And this is something that I've thought about here recently, but um, I, I think now in our relationship, we're always talking about how to invent pretty much more money. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we figure out a way, kind of like what you were saying when we were camping, like, hey, there's these campers out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we could get one. And, and like I said, we don't have to pay for it, mm -hmm. you know, because there's one thing is like, we don't have to start a camper business, but you could just get a camper and rent it so that you're not paying for it yourself. Yep. When you were not using it, rent it. And you got to pull that camper with a truck. Mm -hmm. But what if you don't have to like start a, a business, but what if you rent that truck just enough to keep it paid off and pay for the maintenance or whatever else? Yeah. You know, and that's what I'm saying is like, people do all these things as businesses. We could do it on a... Or we can make, why not, if we figure it out? Right. If we find out that there is some good money in the camper renting business. You know, but I think now in our relationship, it's always like, how do we figure out how to make more streams of income, right? Right. Back in the day, it wasn't, I think we did have those conversations too. There weren't as many of them back then because we were in a different position. Back then we were not just trying to figure out how to make more income, but we were also trying to get out of debt. Right. 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 So there was that combined with how can we make more money? Do you remember us ever having like negative conversations about money or any negative thoughts towards money since we've been together? What do you think? 
what I feel that we need to work on and there is some healing that needs to occur is, and the note is on that blue pad right there. Okay. But it's breaking free from... The scarcity of money. scarcity of money. Yes. I think that there, because while we we were listening to earlier, there's five things that you have to master. And one is money, mental game. And that's why I was listening to the soul of money, because I know personally that when it comes to big change or big investments, we, we play the game, but we don't play the game at the level we should be playing it on. Ooh, that's a good one. Write that shit down. We just recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though. Yeah. That's what I feel. And it's I feel that it's because it's the fear within us of going back to where we started. Right? Because we work so hard to get to where we are now. And if there's no risk, there's no reward. Like, And we have taken risk. I don't, I, but I, don't, I feel okay. that we're still playing safe, that we're at a level. So you so you think that there's, okay. That we should be playing at a higher level. That's what I feel. All and right. I feel that there is a scarcity of, of, that, that, of money, our mindset, because of that. I think that has to do also with something else that we were listening to where it's like where we are compared to our potential and where we know we could be and where we should be Mm -hmm. right and that's that makes it hard sometimes so that's one and then mastering marketing i feel that that is something else that once we get once we figure that out oh my god there's just a couple of tweaks that we need yeah and once we figure those out we are going to be well because revenueing they, he talks about, um, mastering the revenue, like being a revenue monster, like having different streams of income. And we are on that. Like we can see that we can visualize that we talk about it a lot. So I don't feel that that's something that we have a problem with and then scaling how to duplicate what we're doing. Like once we know what success is, once we master the the money mental game and the marketing i feel that we are going to do very well once we find that out yeah. once we learn and the only way i the i feel that it once we learn that whether it's hiring a coach or um getting someone to do the marketing for us i think man, yeah that is when shit's going to start happening and that ball is just going to keep rolling yeah because even if we hire someone to do our marketing, we are going to want to learn. We're going to be asking yeah, questions. No, we're going to we'll, learn we'll this thing. And yeah, we'll be involved with it. Yes. You know, and time is money. So no, you and I, the way we are, it's like, okay, we'll hire you for a few months and then we're going to learn it and then we're going to do it ourselves. But once you get to a certain level. You can't afford to do it exactly, yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And this is. You keep like taking me in freaking different, like I was going to say something about, but one thing, one thing that I've talked about in the past or that I've thought about in the past when it comes to this podcast and I I don't know, I don't know what else, maybe business or maybe getting to different levels of success in business or different things, but it's that being able to let go. And with the podcast, like you see when I'm editing videos and when I'm doing things. Yeah. Right. Yes. The amount of control that I have. Because I'm the one watching. The videos come out exactly how I want them to come out because I'm the one doing it. Right. And then, like, I really started thinking about, like, what if I ha- what if I hand this off to somebody else mm-hmm. so that I could focus on other things or whatever? Or maybe they're just better at it than I am. But then losing that control yes. made me have, like, certain feelings yes. about, like, this is my thing, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I don't... I don't want to hand that over. Where's the gun? Don't. No. <laughs> you better not. I'm going to kick you. Dude, you have the gun right there. Are you serious? For this, for okay, this reason. Okay, you guys, are you guys watching YouTube? Or you're, if you guys are on YouTube. This is not an ad for the bug assault <laughs> gun, but you guys can pick one up on Amazon through our Amazon link. If you guys go to oppositesattractpodcast.com. There was a fly. Click on the support the okay, show link. for those of you that are not watching this. 
There was a fly that landed on my forehead. Hey, that was that. Uh, that was the burn. Was it Bernie Sanders or was it Joe Biden? It was one of the old dudes. What? That they had a fly land on them. Oh, I think oh, it was yes, Joe yes, Biden, yes. right? I think it was. Yes, yes. Anyway. And so, anyways, Miguel pulls out his damn gun that, that he. That has, fly better right? act right. You better not shoot that fly Where's while that? it's on my forehead. On yeah, there'll be a fight right here. Anyway, what the hell were we talking about? <laughs> Oh, make sure you go to opposite track podcast.com. Oh, Click no. on the support the show tab and pick up a bug assault gun through our Amazon link. That's an oh. ad right there. <laughs> but, Anyways, what the hell? Um, but um, the money, there was something that like, I don't, I don't have an issue. Like I told you with. Oh, control, spend- letting go of control of your baby. Oh, the yeah, podcast, yeah. Yeah. Like making the clips and stuff like that. And did you know that in itself, it will will stop a business from getting to the next level. Our friend who owns a very successful pool business, that was his deal. I remember him talking to me. He hired a coach and the coach is like, hey, dude, you need to hire an operation, another operational manager, or, you know, like get, you know, telling him that in order for it, his business to get to the next level, he has to let go of that control. Yeah, I think for me, it's a little bit or maybe it's an excuse, but you can tell me what you think. I think it's a little bit different because his pool company is pretty mm-hmm. big, right? But he is not like this is our this is us. You know, like that's a pool company. But they build pools. Mm-hmm. Like we are kind of giving ourselves this is what we do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's a little bit different. So giving up control like to an office manager, as long as you have the skills, mm-hmm. then cool. Like you can handle that job i know it's maybe hard to find somebody that has exactly what you're looking for to fill that position Mm -hmm. but for us for me to leave editing like the artistic create like i don't i don't think there's much of an artistic creation part to it when you're looking for a manager for a pool company you know what i mean that's i think the difference why i have a little bit of a harder time handing that over to somebody else Two, though, if you have a second set of eyes looking o- looking um, at the podcast and picking clips, right? Because that's something, too, that I feel that you're like, mm, like, I don't know if they will be able to do what you do. But having a fresh set of eyes and someone listening to the podcast who ha- who um, is experienced in doing exactly that, they can also give us feedback. And I feel that they may bring something yeah they have to to understand what we're trying to do right right i think but yeah so you just have to build that connection and and that and that rapport i was just thinking that that was maybe a sign of something that's underlying that i can't let it i don't want to let it go yes but but that's with us because we've always done things to save money or so that we didn't have to pay someone else to do it for instance you used to clean the pool yeah and you were stressed out of your mind, right? Like you were pretty stressed because there was a lot going on. Yeah. And, it, you know, but to pay someone to come in and clean the pool. Yeah. Right. Or like the landscaping, you did pretty good because you're like, I don't want to be out there doing. Yeah. But there's. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like knowing that you can do it. Like you've changed my oil in my car forever. And then I stopped. And now you stop. So it's like, okay, well, it's I know like, you can do it. And I know it will save us a little bit of money, but you are more valuable to where we thing. can. That's exactly. what we were talking about. Yeah. Yes. But at the same time, you do like, that is how you learn things sometimes is by paying somebody else and they show you how to do it or they mm-hmm. do it for you. And you learn kind of like what I was talking about right before we started the podcast, hiring somebody to help me look over some things. And then once I do that, I'll know what they're looking at. Right. And then I can do it myself. Um, but what I was talking about earlier was um, like a negativity. Like if in our relationship we've had negative thoughts towards money, like towards. Uh, yes. What do you what do you mean? How do you? Well, I just went over it. Like just having that. The, the not willingness to spend when we need to spend it. Right. And, and invest not, in ourselves. Exactly. Like not spending the money that we need in order to get better, whether it's conferences, whether it's ha- hiring a coach, um, it's investing into investing into what it is that we are doing. It's the, the scarcity, too, of going back and playing safe. 
Yeah. That's that's what I feel. I, I feel that we're not playing on the level that we need to play on. Yeah. You know? You better not. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot your ass. <laughs> yep. So I do feel like there's something there. Yeah. That we need to look at and heal from. But we're I've been recognizing that lately, and I thought I voiced it to you. Um but that's just another part of growth, right? It's it's being aware of what we're feeling and where we're at and things that we need to work on in order to uh, get to the next level. Yeah. Yep. You know, most people don't want to self-reflect. They don't want to look in the mirror and point fingers at the person that's looking back at them in the mirror. And that's something that we've always been good at is self-reflecting and taking responsibility and not, you know, making you can bullshit everybody else, right? On my notes, it's easier to lie to everybody else than yourself. We were watching this video. Uh, we were well tonight is a huge UFC fight, and we were mm-hmm. watching uh one of the UFCs. Like this dude's gonna end up in the Hall of Fame. Like one of the favorite fighters, Cowboy Donald Cow- Cowboy Cerrone, and it, this may be one of his last fights. He's coming to the end of his career, but he he's one of the people that was down to fight any. Like lit- he was w- one of the few people. It's like. Call me up if you want to fight, and I'll fight. And whenever they needed somebody to save the day, when somebody fell out, they would hit him up, and he would jump in and fight. And now he's kind of gotten older. But one thing that he was talking about was, like, what it takes to get to the UFC. That's a that's a freaking accomplishment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To get to the UFC and all the work, like you're fighting in these little these little shows, these little regional shows, and then little by little you work your way up to getting to the UFC. And then once you get there... It's like, oh, man, I made it. Mm. Right? Yes, yes. I made it. Yes. And then you stop doing the things that it took to get there. Exactly. Once you made it. Exactly. And have you felt that you've ever done that? Shit. Seriously. I, I felt that. Like, right when he said it, there was a couple things that he was talking about that I was just like, oh, man, this is fucking hard to hear. And, like, hearing him and the way he talks about it, too, he's so sincere with everything mm-hmm. you can tell. You know, and that's why people love them. But uh, yeah, I've I've felt that so many times. Like, you know, when I, I really thought about, I thought about this podcast in a moment. Like, what is one of the highest moments that we've had on this podcast? When we had uh, Joe Coy on. What happened immediately after we had him on the podcast? Everything started changing right after that. You know, and and I don't know if it was like a subconscious thing. Or something, but it's kind of like I, I wasn't handing out flyers the way I was before. I wasn't posting like I was before. Mm. I, I was talking to you about jujitsu, about getting when I was a white yep. belt. Yep. Like I would go to the gym and like we would throw down. Hasn't been like that for a while. Mm-hmm. It's like you made it. You know right. what I mean? It's not. It's like hitting that plateau where you just get comfortable. You get, um, yeah, because I think back to in legal shield, they used to tell that all the time people get to executive director, which is, you know, the, the top position, like the very first top p- position yep. that people struggle to get to. And it's like, getting then blue they, belt. and then they stop, <laughs> like right? Blue like belt. they hit it that month. And then the following month they end up falling out. Because they're like, well, I did it. And it's the same thing with working out, you know, like, it sucks. <laughs> so on Facebook, okay, I have never taken a picture of myself in a bikini. Yeah. Except that one time we were living in I this know, house. The blue one in front yeah, of the mirror. I was mirror selfie. keto and I dude, got one of those in this house, I think, too. Yes. <laughs> And we were on it together. We were. We were. We do well when we are on shit together because yeah. we hold each other accountable. But when we're not, dude, we're not. It's like the light switch is on or if it's, it's fucking off. Hey, you know what? And if, when it's off, it's off. Listen, and when it's on, it's on. And it's been off for a little while. For those of you, go back through our uh, old clips. We got one about how we would be like the Tony Robbins of crackheads. If we ever <laughs> became crackheads, remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go back and check that one out. It's funny. But uh, yeah, and I, you know, a picture pops up and I'm like, damn, like finally, like I'm looking at that picture and I'm like, dude, I was on it. Like I was so yeah. on it. And 
I was so on it, but it was, it's hard to keep at that pace because I was working out twice a day. Right. Yeah. I was working out in the mornings and then after whatever I appointments that. I you had, yeah, you can't keep that up. You can't not with kit. Like it's hard. It is. And at that time I was running those fucking like 10 miles, 12 miles, 15 miles. Yes. You know, so it's like, but then you reach the level and then you get comfortable and you stop doing the thing that freaking worked. But yeah. there has to be a balance. You yeah. have to be able to sustain what it is that that you're doing, unless that's what you do for a living. I mean, if I was working out, uh, you know, if I was a uh, instructor or whatever, and that's what I did for a living, then hell, there's no excuse. Yep. You know, but when you have everything that's going on to to stay at that level where we were at, it is kind of hard to sustain that. So then you got to find your balance, but that's not an excuse. I'm just saying like we started it. We knew it, we know what to do to get to where we want to be. It's just Getting staying there. That. And this is the thing too is that man, I mean, it happens- how much how much time and how much effort did it take to get there? Well, and to just let it go. You know, like you could beat yourself up about it or do something about it. Right. Yeah. You could beat yourself up or do something about it. And I do both. I beat myself about up about it. And then I do something about it. I think maybe like we said, like maybe, yes, we have to find a little bit better of a balance, but I think we have to, f- I, maybe it's just a cycle that people get into maybe not everybody but i think maybe most people like it's a cycle that you get into like you're on it for a while and then you fall off and then you get back on it for a while and then you fall that's tiring it it, but i think it is what it is i think that's just what a a lot or most people do exactly and i think that maybe better is just to like try to recognize it and then get off like shorten that damn cycle up a little bit right more more often because even like that fighter guy like, I'm sure he's at the end of his career. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure now he's probably looking back like, shit, if I stayed on it when I got in, Jeez. he could have been maybe a world champion. Right. You know, but now that opportunity is pretty much gone because he's older. He's at the end of his career. He's not going to really go back to being a world champion like when he was, you know, 25 mm-hmm. in the best shape of his life, you know? Right. So that opportunity has gone because of it. And you know, that's why self they talk about it all the time, like self-discipline equals freedom in every aspect of your life. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's business, whether it's your health, whether, you know, just it's doing the little thing every day. And that's it. Like, that's why, you know, like I go to the, the gym now, it's like three days out of the week. If I'm there three days out of the week, like I'm good with that. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I'm good with that. That's where I have to start. At first I was doing five days out of the week. Right. I was going Monday through Friday and I and I liked it and I enjoyed it. But then we go camping, kind of throws it off. And I'm like, okay, well, you got to continue. You know, it's like, okay, get back in it because every event fucking throws me off, you know, and it's like now here I am again fighting to get up at 530. I missed the six o'clock class. I guess I'm going to go to the 915 class. And then that's how it starts. Right. Then you you make it okay And right. Right. So now yeah, we got to get. Well, you know, it like I said, it's a cycle, and I think we're at the end of coming to the end of our cycle. Oh and no, back I think on. that's an excuse. No, <laughs> we'll see. But everybody does it because if everything that was good for you was easy, well, like I said, I think it's like like you were talking about earlier. It's a game. It's all <sighs> a, it's all a game, and it's just figuring out the game. It's a game that it's a mental game that we play. It's the yes. money. It's the money game that we play. It's the career game that we play. It's all a game. You just got to figure out how to play the game so you're successful mm-hmm. in it. And there's certain parts of the game that are for us and other parts that are not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, the way what we want in life. And that's the thing. Like, you have to know what's important to you. Yeah. Like, you have to know what's important to you. Back in the day. I was so scared of being broke, of being poor, that I was chasing the dollar. I was chasing success. And boy, I was chasing it and it was running away from me. Yeah. And I was working nonstop. And then mommy guilt would come into play and I would just throw everything out 
out, right? Business, yep. everything. And the business went out the window. And it's just like up and down, up and down, up and down until I wrote down, I, I, I don't remember who told me, but they're like, you need to know what's important to you in your life. What's important to you in your life? Yeah. And you need to list them and that's how you want to work your schedule. And it's like my family, the dollar is not more than my family. And so I had pre- everything. Re- rearrange. I, I had to rearrange everything. And I know that my health and working out is up there. In order for me to keep sane and stress, not completely out of my life, but to a minimal and where I do my best and feel my best, I have to work out. I have to keep that in my routine. There's and, you know, no way around it. And there was something that I think I remember hearing when we were working in Legal Shield. But you also have to understand that, like, if your business is really important to you, mm-hmm. then working out, even though it may not be as important as to you as your business you may have to work out all the time because it's important for your business. Right. Right. Like if your business is that important to you and you don't really feel like working out, you might need to work out because it's important for your business for you to get up, get going, and it just impacts your business in a different way. Yep. And that's how I feel. Like working out has to be a priority because if I don't feel good, yes. If I don't feel good about how I feel, right, or... You know, um, I just know me. Right? It's harder I, to do everything else. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, so it's like you have to prioritize and know what's important to you and then start there. Yeah. You know. Yep. So uh, at this point, we would uh, like to ask you guys to make sure you go to opposite to track and share it with the people that, you know, when you guys go there, you guys can listen to the podcast there. You guys can listen to the podcast there. Um did I already say that? You guys can watch it. I think I almost snorted, you threw up something. I don't know what the heck just happened. But um, you guys can watch it there, listen to it there. You guys can see all of our social media there so you can follow us. Uh, you can share it with those that you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you click on the menu button or at the top of the website, you guys will see the support the show tab. When you click on that, it'll take you to our Amazon link. And anything that you purchase through that link helps out the show. Yes. And they give us a little kickback. And let's give a shout out to, yeah. you know, mom and dad. Y- yeah, my mom <laughs> and my dad, Jeff, they bought us, uh, they, well, they bought themselves they, a TV yes, through, our, through our Amazon link. Yes, so yes. thank you guys for helping us out. And um, yeah, if you guys do the same thing, we would definitely appreciate it. And uh, you guys can also find our merch on Amazon. If you search Opposites Attract Podcast on Amazon, you'll find our T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, things like that. Um, and when you click on that Support the Show tab, you also see a link to Trust Inc. And Trust Inc. is? We are a nationwide mobile notary agency and signing agency. So if you are in the process of purchasing, selling, or refinancing your home, you can request Trust Inc. to be your signing agency. Yep, and you can go to Trust Inc. directly by going to trustinkusa.com. We're also affiliates with Pinwheel, which is a smartphone for kids. Uh, it's a great phone where you guys can track the location of your kids wherever they have it. Uh, you see all the app. Well, you actually approve all the apps that get installed onto their phones. The apps that are available are phones that don't suck their attention. It's not games that you know want them leveling up to the next level, the next skin, the next color, the next weapons, and all that stuff that keep them just stuck on that thing with their face down. Um, it's all apps that are going to make them more productive. It helps them learn languages. It keeps them um, engaged in important things, things that they that they learn. And you'll also be able to see all their text messages, call logs. You have to approve all their contacts. And uh, our so daughter- So what it does for a parent is it gives you peace of mind. Yeah. And uh, here recently, we had a little bit of a situation where our daughter's phone wasn't making all the calls or receiving the text messages. And we were able to reach out to Pinwheel through uh, their app, the uh, the Messenger app, and they were able to walk us through it and fixing it. So uh, if you guys would like to learn more about Pinwheel, you guys can use promo code O-A-P-T-E-N, all together, all in caps, and that'll give you 10% off of a Pinwheel phone on pinwheel.com. There you go. And also buy me a coffee if you guys would like to support the yes, show. Yes, thank you, Ian. Ian from Superstition Spices. Yes, yes, If you guys would like to buy us a coffee, you guys could do that there at buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod. 
And uh, what that is, is like a virtual coffee. If you guys, uh, if we ran into you at a coffee shop or, or at a bar, we'd love to get to know you and have a drink. And if you guys would like to buy us a coffee, a virtual coffee, you could do it there at buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod. And if you live in Arizona, we are so stoked. We are having our first are live event. Uh, we will be presenting the five love languages. I'm really excited about this event because, you know, People see our relationship. I mean, pretty much this is like a reality show, right? The, our podcast. And is hurry like up a and get the tickets because there's like none there's only left. four spots That's left. It. Yeah. So if you're in Arizona, the event's so gonna couples. be in North Phoenix. And so yes, yeah, so get four on. couples mm -hmm. or or two couples. Two couples. Two couples. That's two it. Couples. Last That's two. It. Yep, yep. You don't make it, you gotta wait. Yes, yes. But we will there will be um, more future events. So I'm sure we'll start traveling, you know, once we yep. start to build We'll figure what that we're out. doing the tour schedule yes grabbing tits and touching dicks tours coming here <laughs> no you Go. can't mix that with the five love languages oh no we sorry 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 that. we can't do this <laughs> <laughs> oh shit we just lost our sponsor that was at well, the very beginning hey, that's how you know that we bought all the books ourselves <laughs> <laughs> they weren't given to us. That's how no. you know we believe in the products, right? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> we do this all ourselves. And but, no, um, we actually got the shipment of all the fifth, the, yeah. the 15 sets of books. So for those of you that signed up, you guys are going to get a copy of the five love languages at the event. Yes. And if you are um, interested in hearing about future events, when you go to our website, give it a second for the resource list to pop up. And put in your information, your email, because the people that are on that list will be the ones to be informed first about the events that are happening. And if you are not a Facebook member of Opposites Trek podcast, you might want to become a member because they are the ones who hear about the events first as well. Yep. And that's the page and the group. And uh, you guys can you guys can find all of that. By going through yes. our website. So I was going through uh, so jur some journals that I made for the kids um, before they were ever born when I was pregnant with them. And on Joey's <laughs> journal, I remember writing one of them because you and I were going through a very challenging time in our marriage. Yeah. And I don't want to give you guys all the information, but those that go to the event are going to get the scoop of opposites attract before the five love languages, like the true yeah. raw um, story about, you know, what we've gone through and things that we've been able to overcome um, in order to understand how our relationship is so um, amazing today. Yep. You know, yeah, not we'll that get, it's we'll perfect, it. but. And, and I think over the years on the podcast, we've gotten into it and we'll get into it again in the future, but that's something that we will be talking about at the event. It'll be yes. a lot of fun to get into that. And then you guys can ask questions and, and we'll have different, different things going on there too. Yes. So that'll, that'll be fun. But, um, so because of this event, we decided that we were going to listen to the five love languages again before we go. <laughs> Yes. You know, because the truth is, and, and this is something that, that is not, not to keep selling the event over and over and over again, but, uh, you know, the five love languages is something that once we found it and we started implementing, uh, implementing it. it, it has made a huge difference. And we've kind of, I think out of all the personal development books that we've listened to and read over the years, even... I don't even in a small way. It's the one that we've always just little by like just keep we implementing little to, things. Yes. And it just kind of we just kind of keep. Yes. You know, and um, one thing that I think that'll be cool about the event is that it is the five love languages, but it's like our version. It's our version yes. of the five love languages, yes. which might be a little bit more upbeat i guess or more fun <laughs> what was it we were we were listening to something about words of affirmation yes and we were and i don't know if they said something about the power of the tongue or some yes. shit we're like looking at each other like yeah the power of the tongue that's what i'm talking about <laughs> you know so that's what you can expect at the event right <laughs> but um but no it is fun it's cool like listening to it again right yeah and getting different things at different times and because we are different today than when we first read it or listen to yeah. it because i think we first listened to it in 2000 and 19 18 or 19 i gotta take a look but we're different you know today we Maybe are we are before, different yeah. but it's like when you listen if you've ever done it i'm sure you have you read a book 
And then a years later, you read it again. And it's like, oh my God, I don't remember listening to that or hearing that the first time around. It's like you continue to learn because they say our brains only take in 10%. Yeah. You know, so you will continue to learn. And so when we're listening to this, he's talking about it's funny a couple or a, a lady who's, you know, expressing, you know, why is it that, you know, like the butterflies, you know, why, why does all that going from have being, to disappear? How, why does, you know, the, the, when you first fall and, in love with somebody. Yes. Yes. And while he, she's talking about that, I went and I grabbed my journal and I was at that point in our relationship in 2012. And I started to read the entry to you. And it was very similar of what the girl, what the lady was referring to. Right. Yeah. And then I read a couple of um, entries after and it's a year or so later. And I'm talking about how amazing our marriage is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like and in the entry, I talk about um, you and I talking and how we came to understand that it's the lack of communication that was hindering our marriage. Yeah, you wrote that back in. 2012. 2012. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 10 years ago. So all of this, and we'll share it on the podcast as well, but these are the things that we're going to get into um, at our at our live event. But one thing you want to be careful, because it's funny that we're, uh, we're listening to it again. Mm -hmm. And we went to go pick up the coffees that, you know, Ian from uh, Superstition Spices got us. Yes. And we're listening to the five love languages in the car. And we're like looking at, he's like, you better be taking notes. Did you hear what he's saying right now? Because he's talking to you, you know? Well, <laughs> what happened was the but part it, came on where it's saying to encourage your partner. Yeah. And I'm going through, you know, there's a couple books that I got, you know, that I'm going to write. And it's been tough, though. Just so stupid. And it's not stupid. It's real. It's resistance. It's fear. Just all of that. And I see it and I acknowledge it, but I'm not going to live in there but i was there for a bit and it's he's talking about encouraging your partner and this and this and that and while i'm listening i give miguel like a side eye i but give him yeah, a look we're, and we're you're already there. looking at me the thing is that we're in the car i'm driving <laughs> she's in the passenger seat and we're just like i'm looking forward but i'm just kind of like looking out of the corner of my you listening to this do you hear what he's saying <laughs> and you're like looking at me he's like he's talking to you right now you taking notes and then we both start cracking up laughing but uh but you know what? When I was listening to it, there was something that there was a question that he asked and I wanted to see what you thought or what your answer was. But he asked if there was. What was it? It was. Um, there would be fewer divorces if people would only. What? I said, communicate better. That's exactly what I said. Communicate. Said, that's what you Communicate. thought when he said that question in the book? Mm -hmm. Like that's in the very beginning of the book. Yeah. Yeah. Communicate better. Communicate from love and respect. I thought work on themselves. Really? Well, that would be good. That is good because if you're working on yourself, that means you're going to learn to communicate better. Right. But when you listen to other I have, yeah, when you listen to other couples and how they speak to each other, the the nagging, the demanding, just all of that, it's like, who wants to be nagged at? Who wants to, yeah. you know, have someone over their, you know, shoulder or over them telling them what they need to new, do when they need to do it and expecting them to come back with love and respect well, like respond well, and do the thing that they're being asked to do when they're not being asked in a loving manner well like you were saying in the book he was giving the example of a wife that wanted her room painted oh yeah right yes, yes. she wanted her room painted and i guess I, I guess she had walked into his office and she was like that she had been nagging him pretty much right. or i don't know if she used those words or he did but pretty much nagging him to paint the room. Yeah, she's like, hey, are and you going to paint not, the room today? And he's not doing... Oh, because he was messing with his computer. Right. Right? Yes. And um, and she was getting annoyed as hell because she's been asking him for nine months to paint the room. And this is the words of affirmation thing. So mm -hmm. he tells her, he's like, when was the last time that you said, gave him words of affirmation? Or thanked him or thank for taking out the trash. Or thanked him for... You know, anything from washing your car. And he said that the first thing that she needed to do 
was never asked him to paint the room again. <laughs> yeah, because right? he already knows. No. Right. Yeah, he already, he already knows. knows. He already knows the room needs to be painted. So stop telling him to freaking paint the room. He's got it. He knows. I'm just saying. Baby, shut your face. <laughs> but Don't ever bring it up again. Dr. Chapman said. But it worked. So that's what he said. So yeah. she came in because he was counseling this, this young lady. And she ended up coming in and saying, hey, what you said to do worked. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like it's, you know, it's. Letting them know that you appreciate them and that you're thankful, you know, and it all stems from love and respect and the way you communicate with each other. Yeah. And somehow when you're in a relationship for years, we're going on 14 years. I mean, we've we've learned this, you know, a few. Well, just reading my journal communication is something that we've been working on since 2012 when I brought it for to at your least attention. 10 years. Yes, and it's something that we've had to continue. And apparently, to I work wasn't on. very good at it back then. <laughs> and being able to apologize when you are in the wrong, yeah, like that's huge. Because I, I think that that's something we both worked on. Right, we both had to work on that. Yes, you know. So it's like you have to suck up your pride. You have to suck up your your ego. And he was saying how so many couples, like once the honeymoon stage ends, it seems like everything ends, you know, and either you're going to give up or you're going to fight for, for your love. And if you give up, all you're going to do, you're, what you're going to have to do is the same thing because that love, you know, those, the butterflies, the sweaty palms, all that, the, the honeymoon stage doesn't last forever. And in my book, I was questioning that, right? In my journal, I'm like, why does the love Right. Yeah. And, you know, have yeah. to have to end. Why? You know, the the uh, passion. Where does that go? But it doesn't, because even after 14 years, I think you and I have had some crazy sex. Right. Yeah. Like after many years. I mean, it's always been really good. But. <laughs> We got to get a better one than that, man. That's a pretty I'm going to get my own. That's a pretty <laughs> accurate one. Watch. <laughs> um, oh. Just saying. It's pretty accurate. But uh, it doesn't have to go away. Yeah. You just got to learn how to bring it back. You know, that that's one thing that was pretty encouraging. Like listening to right in the beginning of the book. Mm -hmm. This this was good about going back and listening to it again. But Right in the beginning, he tells that story about the wife where the husband was just kind of kicking her to the curb. Mm -hmm. And just by her implementing what he was telling her, how it ended up bringing the husband around, even exactly. though he didn't want anything. To, he fucking told he's like, I don't know what you're up to, but it's not going to work or mm -hmm. something like that. And he's like, I know you're up to something mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. but it doesn't matter. Like you're going to like if you love him yes. or if you love her. Eventually, you can wear them down or something. I don't know. That. That's not, not, not what he said. <laughs> not wear them this down. This is the thing, okay? Not, I'm not saying wear them down, but help them to realize. Yeah, so you've always <laughs> heard me say this. Love conquers all. And it love does. Love will wear them down. Conquers all. Yeah. You can be an asshole. Um, and I will walk in Who you and shoot you no, <laughs> with some butterflies and some rainbows and give you a hug and give you a kiss. You can't be angry forever, especially when yeah. you have someone who comes in, you know, happy and loving. And you so, understand? Yeah. Like, no, no, no. So like the short the short version of that story. I mean, I like she figured out or learned what her husband's love language was mm -hmm. and the thing is that over time even though he was cold to her and yes. he didn't really pay attention to her and he didn't do the things that filled her love tank right by her paying attention to his love tank mm -hmm. little by little that's when he was like i don't know what you're up to because he knew something was happening yeah and then it wasn't even like a happy thing but it was kind of like well you need me to do something for you yeah <laughs> And that's it. Kind of thing. And that was it. And, and that's, that's when everything changed. You know? And that's why I 
And you did that to me? I did do it to you. And I believe in every marriage. Yeah. I really do. Because if you were with someone, if you married someone, if you made that decision to commit to someone, there's a reason, right? There's a reason why you guys fell in love with each other. Right. It's just going back to that place and, and sitting in that place and working through all the, because working through, like, what did I say earlier? Without any risk, there's no reward. Like yeah. when you're in a relationship, if it's easy, if it's easy, right? And you guys never go through any challenges together. You guys never overcome anything together. You guys never reach any goals together. It's so important to have goals, you know, together as well as individuals. But if you never go through anything, if you never overcome any challenges, how, how is you your appreciate? relationship going? Yeah. And how is it going to grow? You and I have been through so much shit together. Yeah. And then in the end, it's always stuff that we look back on. Like you never look in the moment. It may not be the greatest time ever. Right. But you always. But. I think as you get older or or as you become more aware, like you start realizing that it's part of the process. Like eventually mm -hmm. all, all the like for real, like all the shitty things that have happened, whether when you were a kid in your job, like as an adult, a, a lot of it, you end up, well, maybe not everything, but a lot. There are a lot of situations where you look back at it and you're like, man, that was kind of crazy. And I can't believe we made it through that or yeah. something, you know, yes. but it. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes you stronger and it helps you. And it you. helps you appreciate. Yes. You know? For sure. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's cool. And, and I'm actually, like, it's making me more excited for the event. You know, like yeah. going through the book and listening to it again and, you know. That's good. And I'm excited to share it with everybody else too. Yes. My whole goal for the event, I want really to give people an insight of all the crap that we've been through. Because I know that a lot of people can relate. Yeah. And to help the couples to re reunite. I want them that night to share different emotions with us and with each other. Yeah. Their highs, their lows, you know, and get back to where they once were. And I want to give them action steps to take to continue to grow their relationship so that yeah. they can get back to where they once were. Yeah. You know, saving one marriage at a time. That'll be cool. Right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, real quick before we get out of here, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. So Joey, you know, one that, that video that we were watching earlier with uh, that guy, the fighter, Cowboy Cerrone, he was talking about his son. Mm-hmm. At one point, like watching his son when he's coming out of the tunnel, this that this like it might be his last time seeing his son and his son seeing what he does and mm -hmm. him knowing that he did everything that he should do to prepare for what he's about to do. And then he also started talking about raising his son with his with the morals and ethics that he thinks are correct for the world that we live in today, you know, and. That's something that kind of like the the video that you showed me of George Carlin, the old comedian, you know, like all, like if you guys have ever seen clips of jo George Carlin, like he goes down some dark rabbit holes or whatever, but he makes it funny. Mm -hmm. But he also kind of makes you think like you can't rely on others. The school system, right? He's like, you got what you got. Fucking suck it up because your kids what they need to learn you need to teach them that's right and i actually today this morning we had the little handle broke on the toilet and i told joey like we're going to the store i was like i'll help you but you're gonna you're gonna fix it. this is something that's easy enough where a 10 year old can fix it but i wanted like i want i want to start taking the kids and like make them just do shit mm -hmm. like you go talk to somebody you go find the stuff you go pay for it you know, bag it up, get yep. the receipt. And um, I was telling Joe, like, this is something that you need to learn how to do. This isn't hard. Mm -hmm. But I was I was telling him, like, 
don't ever be scared to try to fix something. Always, like, try to figure it out. Because that's what, when I was a kid, I used to love doing that. I used to love taking things apart when something broke. Like, I remember being a kid, and I found these speakers in the trash. And I took them home, and I fucking opened it all up, and I started looking at the wires and trying to, and I ended up making them work again. Really? And I had them fucking hooked up to a little boom box or some shit. <laughs> but uh, I had a telephone that broke. I took that thing apart. But I was just telling Joe, I was like, look, no matter what, even if you break it worse, there's always somebody that's going to be able to fix it. Or there's something that we can do to get it back together. Well, well, well. And I said, well, usually. But. <laughs> We're going to find all our shit open. <laughs> but I was like, that's how you learn. You know, yes. you can't be afraid of just trying stuff. Try it. Mm -hmm. Something. And then I, I kind of explained to him. I was like, some things you need to research. Some things you need to look up. Some things just fucking go for it. I was like, this toilet, go for it. It's got one little thing and you can see it's not complicated. Just You don't need to look anything up. Just give it a shot. If you break it, we'll figure it out. When you take apart the robot vacuum like we did a couple weeks ago that he did, I was like, that you should probably look up. There's a lot of steps to taking that whole thing apart. But don't be scared of it. Give it a shot. We'll figure it out. You know, but I think that's something that's important that kind of like Donald Cerrone was talking about. The fighter, like George Carlin's talking about. Like that is something that he's going to have to learn. And I told him, I was like, this is something that is not just good for you to know now you need to know this for the rest of your life mm -hmm. you need to get that try stuff yes you know i agree and uh and then like teaching the kids different things with audrey we had uh the other day i picked her up from school and they had like their track awards right and i was kind of telling you that they were kind of talking about some of the things that happened throughout the season and how you know, Audrey was like, she so did. Audrey, Miguel picked up Audrey and she had her friend with her. And so they yeah. were both in the back seat, and Miguel was eavesdropping on the conversation that they well, were I'm having. Driving, no. yeah, I'm driving them home. <laughs> and um, Audrey did really well in this one event that, and, and there was another girl that typically runs the event, but she didn't run it this one time. And she ended up getting obviously the trophy for the event because that was her event. But Audrey was kind of like that. Maybe she should have got the the trophy or something, but it was a sit. Go did ahead. run? Did um Audrey run? Was she the alter alternative? Alternate. For she was an her? alternate. Okay, I got think. it. So, maybe. Okay. Or or maybe not. Maybe it was just like, hey, we have an open slot, and you can fill in if you want. Because okay. I don't think she had to do it, but she did it because okay. she wanted to. But anyway, it was one of those things where I mean, I think it's just kids. You got to teach them. They just don't understand it's something that you mm -hmm. have to fucking embed into their head like put it in them because they a lot of people it's like they they get into this thing of talking about others to pick themselves up right, right. and it was like well i did really good in that event i even ran it faster and that's not even my event mm -hmm. and i'm just kind of listening and it goes from I could just kind of hear the envious mm -hmm. or the hater tone. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that I've never liked, mm -hmm. you know? And then I just kind of talked to Audrey. I'm like, hey, do you ever hear your mom? I always kind of use you. I'm like, you ever hear your mom talk about humility or, and she's like, no, or whatever. I was like, being humble. And she's like, yeah. I was like, do you know what that means? She's like, no. And I was like, well, it's kind of the opposite of what you're doing right now. And, um, and I just kind of, I was like, why, what you're doing? I was like, well, first of all, the reason that she got the trophy is because that's her event, right? And you don't know what's going on with her. She might have been not, well, for one, she wasn't feeling good. That's why she didn't, you know? But you can't control what they do. And you have no idea what the reason is why she didn't run it. And her friend was saying the same thing. I was like, but... You don't have to speak negatively about somebody just to bring yourself up, you know? And even though sometimes, like I told her, I was like, when I was at work, like a while back, there would be situations that I would get into where the people that I, were around, that I was around, they would talk about other people at work. And so-and-so does this, and they mess that up, and they, you know, they're jacking shit up here and there. And I never liked it. And whenever that would happen, I always try to find something positive to say about that person. And if it just kept going, I would just like leave the situation. You know what I mean? I just didn't want to be around that stuff. 
And I told her, I was like, you know what? If I was your friend in the back, like every time that you said something negative, I would have found something positive. And I told her specifically, I was like, some, somebody said something like, oh, so-and-so did this and they messed it up. And I was like, well, first of all, the first thing that I think about when I hear people talking bad, like I told Audrey, I was like, have you ever felt like not doing something before? Something that you probably knew you, you should have been doing. Have you ever just felt like not doing it and didn't do it? She's like, yeah. I was like, what if that's what happened to her? You felt that way before. You're not any different. You know, and then I told her, I was like, with my friends at work, when people would be making fun or talking about somebody else's mistakes, I would think I'd be like, dude, I fuck shit up big in my in my career. Mm-hmm. Who am I to be talking about somebody else messing stuff up? You know what I mean? So I would try to find something positive to say about them. And I told her sometimes it's hard. <laughs> But you still don't because they're like some people do just mess up stuff left and right. Mm -hmm. But you still don't want to be doing it. You keep that stuff to yourself. So um, (laughs) when you told me you had that conversation with her, I was on the way to take her to an appointment and I had brought it up. She's like, Mom, Dad already talked to me about it. I said, yes. I said, but I'm going to talk to you about it from a different aspect. Right. I said, you know, you're in the back seat and. Well, she was in the Arlene. You're with Arlene. Yeah. And you're having a conversation about this girl who ran the mile and you're not talking very positive about her. No. And instead of being happy for her, you, you know, are saying the total opposite. How do you, what do you think Arlene's thinking at that time? Yeah. I said, as a girl, I told her in that situation, what I would be thinking at your age is, I wonder if she talks about me that about way. me that way, right? You know, and some or girls I wonder what she will, says about me. And some girls may think that you think that you're too good, you know, like you 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 know that that you put yourself above everyone else the because one, she yeah. has that fire within her, her which is a good thing like she pushes herself yeah. and she pushes herself and she doesn't and make if excuses. she notices if she notice that somebody else doesn't have that burning desire or that push or they're making she excuses. will make a remark about it and kind of make it s- seem negative like oh i don't do that that's not what i do so i i brought it to light because i told her i said you're in seventh grade you're going to eighth grade, then you'll be going to high school. I'm like, and what you're doing is not putting you in a good light. Yeah. So that's how, you know, I came at her because I needed her to see that because yeah. girls are very mm, special in high school. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of drama, a lot of chaos, just a lot of ugliness. So I need a I needed to bring that to her attention because she didn't see it. Yeah. You know, so that was no, my that's talk. Good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think, you know, it's in, it's important, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's a good thing for her, for her to understand. I think, and the, I think one of the bad things too, is when you get people like that, like if you are that way mm-hmm. and then you start running into other people that are that way. And then it just starts like you get a little click of shit talkers. Right. And you get those every once in a while. And it's like, uh, I just wouldn't want to be around that. Right. You know, I would just look for reasons like, all right, you know, I try to give my positive inputs here and there. But at a certain point, it's like, you know what? I got other stuff. I I don't want to be around this. And with her, she's a smart girl. Like these aren't things that we just. You and I, we've learned these things through business, through reading books we, listening to books you know uh, my parents never talked to me no. about any of this so with you and i by her side she'll pick not it up judging her but teaching educating her. her yes teaching her helping her to see it from the other person's perspective she's a smart girl she's going to see it and when she, if it comes up again and she starts to speak and say things at least she'll she's think about going it. to think about it and she's going to correct what she's saying because that's adriana yeah. she does not want to make anyone feel less than 
Yeah. Right. She yeah. doesn't want to make herself look better than. Right. Yeah. It's just she didn't know any better. And these are the things that we as parents, we don't even think about sometimes like teaching our kids just the thing. This is life. These are the things that the that we go through when we're around others and just being ahead of the game and knowing and listening and being aware and being present and thinking before we speak. Yeah. What and how it? other people are feeling, like just keeping other people's feelings yeah. in the forefront. What is it called? Like, you know, like gratitude, but mm -hmm. what is it called when you, I guess it's just like praising other people. Yes. I don't know if there's a name for that or like when you're lifting other people up or yeah. something like that, but it's like pay think, attention think, to those well, that are clapping when you are having success. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I've, I've done this. I've had thoughts and this is something that maybe she can, we can talk to her about and something that we can all practice or I, I can get into the practice of more is I've had those negative thoughts, like even in front of somebody, like I think something mm -hmm. about that person or something and like I'll immediately change it to something positive and say that instead mm -hmm. of what I was thinking a second ago. Right. And it turns everything around. Yes. You know? Yep, but just kind of bringing it up to her and having her recognize it and turn it around. It's having control of your thoughts. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And with that, make sure you guys go to OppositesAttractPodcast.com. Share it with the people that you know. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching Opposites Attract Podcast. Where we get better. Together. Bye. Bye.